Joe Gettle here, and welcome to Trinidad, Colorado. Um, we're down here for the Rad Dirt Fest gravel race presented by Wahoo. It's the six of seven stops in a lifetime Grand Prix. I just got done riding the first kind of real dirt section. Yeah, and it's gonna go kaboom right there and then. So backing up, the course is 112-ish miles. On the map, it looks like it's a lot of climbing, but it's the word is it's pretty mellow. Um, all I did was this first section out here, so I don't really know what the whole course is like. However, word on the street is that the gravel is pretty darn fast. So on my coach's advice, I've switched over to some slicks. They kind of got a texture to them. Um, they're the Maxxis Velocitas. That's the only change I made to this bike since the other races. And they're surprisingly comfy. More traction than I thought I was gonna have. So they're pretty smooth over the rough terrain. Roxy, come here. Roxy. Hey, you, come here. Well, trail dog Roxy here hates the car rides, but she loves getting out and exploring a little bit. So didn't you do that? Yeah. Are you tired? Yeah. Have we been driving for two days? Yeah. Well, you're just the cutest. Isn't she the cutest dog? Yeah. I know there's more dogs in the, uh, the cycling scene. One particular wiener dog I know about that's pretty famous, but a little art can hold her own. Look at it. Look at how cute she is. <laughs> Tuesday morning. How's Kenny doing? Much better. It's not 4 a.m. Good morning. It's race day, September 30th. Morning of the Rad Dirt. One thing I like about the Rad starts at 9, so it's currently 6:15 right now, not 4:15. Um, so yeah, I'm enjoying my Bob's Red Mills gluten-free pancake with some eggs that I had pre-made the other day. So all I do is heat it up in the microwave. A banana and of course 100% pure maple syrup. That's breakfast. We're we gonna get you some coffee. Oh, yeah, your hat's slightly crooked. There we go. Is that better? Yeah, I think my eyes are crooked because I always wear my hat like that <laughs> and I think it's straight, but apparently, is this straight now? Yeah, it's still crooked. It's more straight, more straight there. That's good. Yeah, see, now it feels crooked, so I'm pretty sure I've got a crooked face. <laughs> yeah. this race. Um, as you can see, it's been a little bit of a hectic start on the little town circuit and bike path they had us go out on. They had some lead motos, so they were holding their speed back, um, but it was just a fight for position as it got so narrow so quick. Right here, they are releasing us from neutral, so we're free to race, and at mile 3.8, there is a little choke point where we go between two fences and only a single rider can get through at a time. Everybody knows this, so we're all trying to be right at the front, right at that spot, which is gonna make for some pretty nervous racing through this next two miles or so.
That was intense. While it's sad to see someone go down, I felt like that crash was a little bit inevitable. Having the men and women start together, I just don't know if it's the best idea anymore. Just the level's so high and the guys are so aggressive that things are gonna happen. Um, looking back at the crash, it was two guys up ahead that I believe hooked bars and Nathan went down in front of Ruth, um, who also then went down and she's the one laying on the ground here that broke her wrist. So super sad to see as she was pretty high up in the Lifetime Grand Prix standings. Back to where I'm at now, um, coming out of that pinch point, I was sitting on Ian's wheel and it just so happened that he was the one where that split really happened with the front group. So I'm sitting in no man's land between group one and group two. Um, so you might think it's a better option just to sit up and go back to the next group, but I pre-rode this and not far up the road is the next Jeep trail that is gonna go down to single file in sections. And I really don't wanna get caught by the group behind me and going at the back. So I do ease up and luckily that group split apart a little bit and just Griffin and Cole come past me here. So I'm able to hook right on the back of them and then go into this four wheeler trail with some pretty good speed and catch right back onto the tail end of the lead group. So while I did have to burn some matches to stay you know, kind of on my own through that section, I'm better off being where I'm at now. this Jeep trail here and I'm definitely starting to see signs that I'm not on my best day as I'm struggling a bit to hold the wheel of Griffin. Being at the back of this pack, every time we go up and down a hill, there is an accordion effect and it gets stretched out and then we have to kind of surge a little bit to get back on the group. So that's not making things easier. My heart rate's been above 170 since the climb going into the pinch point and I'm hitting in the 180s here, which is above threshold for me. So I know I'm definitely going a little too deep right here, but trying to stay with the group is still a priority. Hoping that it'll chill down once we get a little bit further out of this trail and over the uh, paved hill coming up. nine and a half. We are just at the start of about a four minute climb. This part of the race I was actually looking forward to before starting. However, I'm just completely gassed after the effort through the Jeep trail and don't have it in me to stay with this lead group here. I take a look back and see there's another group coming. So I decided to pace this a little bit slower, hop in that group and hopefully we will chase back together. So first rider to come by me here is Cole, uh, but he's moving a little too quick for me trying to get up to that group. So I stand up and wait just a little bit further. Next we have Admiral Bears and someone else here and we're near in the flatter part of the climb. So I think these would be the guys that I can try and stick to. Unfortunately, just a little bit further, we hit another riser and I fall off Adam's wheel and the other guy here. So I revert to the next couple guys containing Kerry Warner, Jack Odron, and a Trek Bear Rider. We come over the top of this hill and these end up being the guys that I could stick with as we head down the hill.
I'm gonna give this section a big Minnesota statement of oofta. It's been slightly uphill with the tailwind, so that's diminishing the draft, and we have been chasing what feels to me like super, super hard. The groups were kind of splitting apart, people were breaking off the front, falling off the back, so like the chasing wasn't super cohesive, and I just feel like I've been on my limit pretty much since that hill. If we look at the last 55 minutes of racing or so, I've been at an average heart rate of 173, hitting 181, so that's well into my threshold. The power here isn't too crazy, you know, 295 watt average with a 322 normalized, which normally isn't too bad, but here at altitude and feeling like I'm not on the best day, it's, it's felt pretty darn tough for me. Carrie had actually dropped off the back and I saw that and I was thinking about falling off and just trying to ride consistent pace with him because I knew I was going too deep. However, we can start to see the lead group in the background actually and I'm thinking if I can just hang on and we can catch them, there's a chance that I can get my heart rate down, recover a little bit, then have the benefit of being in that group. My time here at the front is super short-lived as I fall off the group on this kicker at the top of this first long false flat climb. Um, my hopes of sitting in the group and recovering just didn't happen. Um, the pace actually was still pretty quick and with that tailwind I just didn't have much of a chance to rest. Yeah, um, just didn't have it on the day. Hey John. Up there, what? Oh yeah, I didn't quite make it, and then I made it, and then it got steep again. A little bit further on the race, I get caught by John Brosman and another rider here, and this is the first time I can tell that I'm in really big trouble, as I try and stay with him, and I just have zero gas in the tank. I don't have any help. Sorry, I just can't help. I'm a little blown. And now I'm kind of sitting in no man's land in between groups and really struggling. In hindsight, looking back at how I played out this race, of course we can say I went too hard in the beginning and blew up, which when you do that at altitude, you can really pay the serious price, which I'm doing right now. Yeah, it might've been better just to calm down way back and find a group that was a little bit more manageable pace and ride this race consistent. However, my goal isn't to ride consistently for 30th place, you know. I want to be up here fighting with these guys and you just, you have to go for it if you want to have a chance at getting a good result. going into this that my racing at altitude hadn't been the best with Crusher being my worst race of the season so far, but I still hold enough hope that I could do all right. I live in Salt Lake at 4,700 feet, so I do live at a certain amount of altitude, but this year it's been pretty tough anytime I get above 7,000 feet, which we're kind of hitting right here. So from here on out, it just kind of switched my focus to survival mode.
mile 45.5 as we turn on to the next major climb in this race. I find myself actually in a pretty nice group, again finding Kerry Warner to ride with. Not too long into the climb, I still realize that I'm pretty much bonked and just kind of hold on for as long as I can because there is a little bit of wind here so I am getting a bit of a draft and hoping that I can just kind of get myself a little further along versus uh, riding by myself for longer. Maybe a third into this climb, I fall off. Wasn't the first one out of this group to fall off, which felt good, but still just uh, not having my day. As we go further up the climb, my power continues to go down, barely able to hold 200 watts, so not even my zone two power. And I actually get caught by the lead woman right here. Now, I know I'm totally bonked, but not gonna lie, this is a bit embarrassing. I've never been caught by the woman before. I know they're super strong, so having an off day, um, of course, there's a chance of that happening, but still just a huge bummer. What I'm feeling right now is I. I just don't want to be here. Um, yeah, just is what it is. All that's left to do is pedal whatever wattage is going to come out of my legs and try and get back to the finish as fast as possible to kind of end the misery of what this bad day is. You guys have like Coke or Sprite or anything? Perfect. You want this as quick as fill up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Takes a little time there. You guys have a like, crush? Perfect. All right, thank you. Happy trail. <sighs> Make my way back down the mountain. I find a companion to ride with for a little bit here. Slowly, I feel the power starting to come back in my legs. We actually run into Melissa, another female rider out of Salt Lake, and she was out of water. So being that my race was over, I was more than happy to hand her what I had. And then I just stopped again at the next aid station. in his bottles. I've got one Coke, one water. And then from here, it's gonna be five miles to the finish. It's a fun little downtown Main Street area. Um, hopefully he'll wanna eat some barbecue or pizza or tacos or something. So those are kind of the options down there. That's about all I know. I've had no service to see any updates since I saw him last. So we're just chilling. Hey honey. Sorry about that. I just, I had zero power above 7,000. I, uh, I know. I know. I can do it. I love you. Everywhere we go, Just finished up the rad. Not gonna lie, 
probably one of the worst races that I've ever had. I just had no power above 7,000, 8,000 feet today. So I just kind of noodled along. And then as soon as I got back down to maybe under 7,000 feet, all the power just came back and I was able to just ride pretty hard in honor of racing. You know, you want to come out here, you want to try your best. So I pushed pretty hard to the finish, but yeah, just, just a tough day. And I think I've learned, at least for this year, I just am not good at these high altitude climbing races. Uh, see if a bigger block over the winter helps out because I'd like to do better at these races. Um, but I think moving forward until I show that I can do better at these, we're gonna focus on um, some of the other styles, shorter hills, trying to stay under 6,000 feet, uh, stuff like that. So. All right, well, that is a wrap on the rad. Next up, we'll be at uh, Belgian Waffle Ride, Kansas. Um, that one suits me a lot better again. I got two weeks, so I got a little time to just kind of let the body and the, the mental side of things from this race calm down, try and get in the best form I can for that race. And yeah, so we'll see you there. Little R, hey little girl. It's so good to see you. So good.